Hi, my name is Patty, and this is my first video, so please bear with me if it's kind of odd or not smooth, um, but we're going to see how we can get through this and improve it with every video. Uh, the videos that I'm going to be uplifting or sharing with you are going to be videos about my life after 60. Now, I'm going to have lots of things going on. We're going to do fun things and take trips. But what I wanna start out with is a video about what I've been going through since the beginning of the year. Well, actually it started a little bit before the beginning of the year. Um, I did have some back surgery. I had a fusion and I always have to remind myself because it's kind of crazy. Um, I had a fusion of L4, L5. Um, it um, was a degenerative spondylolisthesis, a word that I still cannot pronounce after all these months. Um, so just a little background on that. About six, seven months ago, I had what I thought was a bout of sciatica and it just never went away. I couldn't walk, walking was getting worse, um, pain was getting worse. And so I went to my regular doctor, my primary care, and they gave me some steroids and some pain medicine. And because it just wasn't going away and because of some of the numbness that I was having, they did refer me to a spine doctor. I went to the spine doctor, he took some x-rays at that very appointment. And he told me that I did have this degenerative disease where my spine was just totally out of whack, uh, pushing on the nerves that go down my legs, which was the reason that I felt like I had 50 pounds of potatoes attached to each leg. Walking was just miserable and it, it was just more misery than pain. Um, so when he offered me injections for the pain, I turned them down because it really was more about not being able to walk distances, getting very exhausted. Um, so. This was around November. He said to do some exercises and he gave me something for pain and he said, come back after the holidays, let's see how you're doing. But he had pretty much told me that for the feeling of the potato sacks on my legs, for the trouble that I was having with walking, surgery was more than likely gonna be the only thing that would help me. But he said, take your time, think about it. So after the holidays, I went back to him and the walking issue was worse. So he suggested the surgery. My husband and I thought about it and we knew how totally miserable I was. We went ahead and scheduled the surgery, um, the fusion, which I had February 7th. So that kind of catches you up as to what went on up to that point. Believe me, I was miserable. I would not have back surgery unless I absolutely felt I had to. My, um, my quality of life was getting worse. I mean, I was just, I couldn't do anything. So we ha I had the surgery. It was an outpatient surgery, minimally invasive. Um, I have two small incisions in my back. Uh, I went into the surgical uh, area, into the hospital, early on the uh, 7th, and um, I was the first case in. They came in, they prepped me, um, and they took me away to surgery, and I just remember telling the anesthesiologist, I've never had surgery before, I don't want to feel anything, I don't want to know anything. and. Um, uh, he pretty much made sure of that because I remember nothing once I waved goodbye to my family. I woke up. I had been in recovery for a while because they had some issues getting me out of the anesthesia. Um, my oxygen level went down a little bit, but yeah, nothing too bad. So I was out of surgery. Uh, my family came in to see me. They told me I was hilarious with, uh, I guess, the drugs that was in my system, which I I was kind of looking forward to them, I won't lie. Um, so my husband and I stayed there for a while longer. They wouldn't let me leave until I was able to use the bathroom. Um, and that took me a while. I almost had to be admitted because I just could not pee. But finally that happened, they sent me home. 
the first couple of days are really a blur. Spend a lot of time take sleeping and the pain meds and just being exhausted from the surgery. I was falling asleep talking to my family. Um, I would be talking to them and then I would just nod off and um, they thought that was very entertaining. And I was glad that I could, you know, accommodate them and entertain them and keep them happy. Um, so I was on a lot of pain. I was on Percocet, a lot of pain meds. And my husband basically had to do everything for me. I mean, everything. I couldn't clean myself. I couldn't, sh you know, shower and all this stuff. But, and even after a couple of days when I could shower, um, you know, he had to dry me off because you can't bend, you can't twist, and you can't lift. So you really can't do anything at all. My poor husband uh, had to do everything. And he's still actually having to do a lot of things because you can't bend, twist, or lift for like three months. And I am currently five weeks out. So almost six weeks. Um, so the first two weeks were interesting. My husband had to change my dressings. And, and it was great because every day you could see the drainage being less and less, the bleeding less and less. Um, and it was really, it was healing very nicely. It would itch like crazy. And I think that was because of the surgical tape. But still, the doctor said take some Benadryl, which only made me sleep again. So first week, I really slept a lot. Um, then uh, the second week, my husband went back to work, so I was home by myself, and that was all right. I mean, I did okay. I got up and walked every hour. Uh, we had meal prep so that I wouldn't have to do a lot in the kitchen. Um, I came up with all kinds of crazy ways to do things uh, around the house. You know, you just kind of, um, necessity is the mother of invention, that's what they say. So... Second week was not bad. I spent a lot of time sitting in my chair, you know, uh, petting my cat, which made me even sleepier, so I, I got a lot of sleep. But then I had to start walking some more, so I started um, once a day, slipping on my shoes, couldn't put my sneakers on because I can't bend over to tie them, so I had some slip-on shoes, kind of like Birkenstock. And um, I would start it out by walking around my building. We live in an apartment building. Started walking around the building and gradually um, increasing my walking. And so I got up to a mile a day, mile and a half a day, and um, that helped. Walking around really helped. The doctor was like, walk, 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 walk. Don't just sit in one place. So things got better. And by the end of two weeks, um, I was actually feeling pretty good. I went back to the doctor for a follow-up. And, you know, she asked me how I was doing. I said, I feel great. I'm ready to get off the Percocet. I'm ready to go back to work. And uh, she said, well, you know, what kind of work do you do? And I told her, I, I, I have a desk job. And she said, well, I, you know, okay, we'll let you go back to work, see how you do. Um, I weaned myself off the Percocet that weekend so that I could get comfortable driving and stayed out one more week and then after my third week I went back to work. Now something about me, I'm a caregiver. I've always been a caregiver for my family members, my mother, my father. Um, I'm not used to being a patient. I'm used to being a caregiver and I'm used to being a worker. I got my dad's work ethics and inside of me, I was like, I need to go back to work. I need to go back to work. I need to go back to work. So I went back to work. And the first day I made it to noon. The second day I think I made it to noon. The third day I was wiped out and I couldn't go into work. And I have found that since then, I've only been able to work four to five hours a day and I started getting frustrated. I started getting anxious, you know, because, okay, I'm back to work. I need the money. And so I was getting very frustrated and all my friends and family were telling me, girl, you had major back surgery. You're doing great. Just don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Of course I worried about it. Um, 
started praying a lot about it, you know, just trying to give it to the Lord and just tell him, Lord, please direct my path and, you know, look out for us until I can get back to work. And of course he does. But, you know, sometimes your little brain, you know, or my brain anyway. So by the time my next follow-up came around, um, it was about four at the five-week point post-op. I went into the doctor and I said, look, I know I told you last time I was feeling good and I'm ready to go back to work, but I can't work a full day and I'm just totally getting anxious and, and frustrated. And basically she told me the same thing everybody else is telling me. She's like, you had major back surgery. We don't expect you to be able to work a full day, even at a desk job at this point. You just have to understand that. She said, normally she doesn't let people go back to work for three months. The only reason she let me go back is because I have a desk job, but you know, I still have to get up in the morning, shower, fix my hair, put on some kind of a face, uh, get in the car, drive 30 minutes to work, and then work. And I was finding that by the time I did all that and got to work, I was already hurting. So putting in four hours there was just, it was a lot. Um, so I have a leave of absence, a medical leave of absence that is allowing me to, you know, leave early if I have to, telling them that more than likely for the next, for the remainder of this three month period, I'm probably only gonna be able to work a half a day, five hours, do the best I can. It's hard. It's hard to turn off that part of your brain that is telling you you should be working, you should be contributing, you know, you don't do anything, you can't do the dishes, you can't do the laundry, I'll have cold towels if I sit down and do it. But there's this part of your brain that is just like, what are you doing? You, you can't do anything, you know? So, it's hard, it's really hard, but I know that my family and my friends and, and work understand. They are telling me that really the recovery period is a good year. And I'm only almost six weeks out, so I'm gonna learn how to adapt. But I feel actually pretty good. Um, so this video, I, you know, I wanted to catch you guys up. I really wish that I had started it before I had my surgery, because before I had my surgery, I was on YouTube trying to find videos about people who had had the minimally invasive uh, fusion recently, but the only videos that I could find were five, six, seven years ago. You might find one or two within the last couple of years, but there's nothing. So I really wish I had started it before so that I could give you a lot more information but um, that's kind of a quick catch up. What I'd like to do is every once in a while, give you um, an update and let you know what's going on, especially if there's any changes, you know, if I'm feeling better, if I'm feeling worse, if I learn anything new. It may or may not help you, but it might. I mean, I'm, I'm also learning that I have to adapt, uh, adapt. Summer is coming up and um, I'm used to going places with my family. We originally were gonna to go to Savannah, but we have basically figured out we're gonna to have to cancel that because of my back and my walking and just my recovery altogether. I don't think it would be a good idea. So we've decided in order to keep me from being bored this summer, we're going to just take like little day trips or weekend trips and kind of find some fun things like that to do, like go to St. Augustine, go to the beaches, um, go to the Rays baseball games. I'm here in Orlando, there's um, theme parks to go to, although I'm not gonna be able to walk a lot, but I can kind of take it a little bit at a time. We're gonna see how we can adapt these things to my recovery and still have fun. So I will probably bring you guys along with some of those trips with us. Um, and that's kind of what I wanna do. This video was gonna be my video turning 60. Didn't know what to name it. I'm like, my life after 60, 
gray lady, I don't know. I don't know. If you have any ideas, you can let me know in the comments section. Um, but so we're gonna do other things. There's a lot here to do in Orlando and in the surrounding area. And so um, there's gonna be times when I'm going to uh, show you the things that we do for fun. There's gonna be times when I just come on here and just talk um, about whatever's on my mind or continue to give you updates on my recovery. So we'll see. Uh, but it is my plan to keep you updated, um, and it's also my plan to share some fun with you guys. I mean, I have a fun family, and we do a lot of things. Uh, and just because I'm 60, I don't plan on slowing down. And just because I have metal in my back, I don't plan on letting it slow me down. And so... You know, maybe it'll be helpful to some people to see how you can be over 60. You can have totally gray hair. Um, you can have back surgery and still have a good time. So I hope that you will continue to look for my videos. I hope that I can um, keep you entertained, informed, maybe have a, a laugh or two, or you might just say, this girl's crazy. I don't know. Um, I'm kind of subdued right now, but I can be crazy. But I hope that you will join because I, I'm really looking forward to doing this. I think this is kind of fun. And uh, there's a lot that I want to do and a lot I want to share. So if you have any comments, questions, suggestions, anything at all, put it in the comment section down there and I will definitely read them. And also I'm hoping that you'll be able to subscribe to me and follow me around. But at this point, this is where I'm at, trying to juggle recovery and life after 60. We shall see what happens. So give me comments, go ahead and subscribe. I haven't written a really clever closing thing yet. Um, I'm gonna work on that too. But until then, you know, just until we meet again, I hope that you are well, and I hope that you will join me and see where 60, or life after 60 can take us. Nah, uh, I guess the only closing for now is bye. Bye-bye, <laughs> everybody.